Adobe Animate is a top-of-the-line 2D animation software. It's the culmination of almost two decades of constant updates and fine-tuning, and now it comfortably sits on top of the food chain when it comes to its line of expertise. But has it always been the case, though? Here are a few things you probably didn't know about this juggernaut. Let's faceplant right into it. Number 1. It wasn't always an animation software. Back in the golden times of 1993, before the first PlayStation ever saw the light of day, Charlie Jackson and Michelle Welsh were developing a software that would allow them to translate simple 2D graphics into a computer screen. They started a company known as Future Wave Software, and with it came their first project, Smart Sketch. Little did they know that this endeavor to create a simple 2D drawing software will turn into one of the most influential projects to ever grace the World Wide Web. Number 2. The Early Versions Before this program made a significant splash on the future of internet culture, it used to be just Future Splash, as in its name was literally Future Splash. It was only available for Mac OS and only contained a timeline with the most basic of editing tools. The product was later acquired by Adobe and was even involved by Microsoft in the early versions of MSN. We're really digging up relics of the past, huh? Anyways, the first public version wasn't released until 1996. Number 3. A Fable of Many Names in 2015, Adobe released the first official version of Adobe Animate with a good number of new features. But did you know that it wasn't always known by this name? And no, we're not referring to the Adobe Flash era, although we realize it's almost been a decade since that time. But no, we're in fact talking about the portion of its history where efficiency and clarity were never a priority. The story begins when the creators of Smart Sketch started to understand the potential of what they had created and its ability to challenge Macromedia Shockwave, which was the primary way to view multimedia and video games on web browsers. Thus came its first rebranding into Future Splash Animator, along with a brand new timeline and basic animation package that includes things like onion skinning and editing tools. But then Macromedia set a precedent to what current corporations would do. Yeah, Toon Boom, we're looking at you. Anyways, it purchased its competition. Thus, a new rebranding with the name Macromedia Flash was in line. And with this rebranding came the first public version of this software. These versions used to run spirally from Flash Player, which was required for running any media produced by it. A little bonus fact, the name Flash is a combination of Future and Splash. Kinda obvious, but you never know. Number 4. Beyond a program, it's an engine. This program didn't only stay in the animation niche, but was responsible for not only single-handedly launching an entire industry of independent internet animators, but also video game developers, starting its own unique genre of quote-unquote flash games. This massive boom gave birth to massive communities and websites, including but not limited to Newgrounds, which for a while was the go-to hub for hosting these creative minds, as well as franchise juggernauts from which we will name The Binding of Isaac, created by Edmund McMillan. It saw its origin story begin as a flash game before becoming one of the most influential rug-like games, with multiple versions spanning several years, spin-off titles and loads of fan-developed mods. Number 5. With great power comes great responsibility. Adobe Flash used to hold the monopoly over internet usage. 99% of all computers had Adobe Flash Player installed, and most website and simple indie games used to run on it. It held such a high market share that Steve Jobs ended up banning its usage on iOS. And that's only the beginning of the nightmare, as with this massive boom in popularity, cracks in its programming started to show. 
It was very exploitable and absolutely plagued with security issues, which forced many third-party web browsers to blacklist its plugins since it didn't exactly improve the internet experience for their users. Eventually, Adobe phased out support for Adobe Flash and rebranded it to its current form of Adobe Animate. Number 6. It Broke the Code Let's talk about the time when this program broke code. And no, we're not talking about broken code as in exploitable programming. We already covered that part. We're actually referring to the Americans with Disabilities Act which states, and we're not paraphrasing here, entities under the ADA are required to provide effective communication in all of their provided media, while keeping these forms of communications readily accessible. This became problematic when most visually impaired people who relied on a screen reader, braille display, or large text sizes and high contrast found it visually impossible to use websites that made excessive use of Flash. There were also many content creators who would use Flash as a way to gain extra clicks by limiting access to media displayed on their website and locking it behind extra steps. These tricks would only work when Flash was installed. This, along with aforementioned issues, played a part in Flash getting discontinued. Number 7. Productions On less grim notes, let's talk about some of the most popular TV properties that used Adobe Animate or its predecessors in their production. Some industry giants used this software, including but not limited to the Winx Club cartoon, the 2014 version of Tom and Jerry, otherwise known as the Tom and Jerry Show, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Team Up, Adventure Time. Anime's usage isn't only limited to the West, as over in Japan, anime such as Agretsuku are taking advantage of its puppet animation technology for their production. Number 8. Fixing Accessibility Adobe Animate is a tricky software to master. With almost 20 years of constant development in its back pocket, it's only natural for it to be jam-packed with different features and quality of life improvements in order to make the workflow more intuitive and efficient. But with something so packed to the brim, it's only natural for it to come with an equally as packed user manual. 700 pages, in fact involving absolutely anything you could possibly want to learn about this software, and it's available for free on the Adobe website. It does go into excruciating detail for practically every feature. We're aware, however, that a 700-page manual is not for everybody, and for learning purposes, there are many more manageable, bite-sized tutorials available across the internet. But for those of you who do find manuals appealing, this might be just the resource for you. Number 9. A Stagnating Force of Nature Despite competition, Adobe still has many of its products thriving in their respective fields. Everyone still sings Photoshop's and Illustrator's praises. Premiere Pro and After Effects reign over the world of video editing. And Lightroom is the finest photo cataloging software. Animate, however, is kind of struggling to keep its foothold as it's being toppled over by other more specialized, more comprehensive or cheaper alternatives, such as the Toon Boom package that doesn't only support the animation itself, but the entire production pipeline, as well as Grease Pencil and OpenTunes that are, well, free. It still has a very dedicated fan base, however, and there are many productions and independent creators eager to show what this software is capable of doing. Well, that was quite the ride, wasn't it? We hope you learned a thing or two about Adobe Animate. Sometimes the stories go beyond just the technical capabilities of a program, and honestly, the history behind the software is just as wild as the stories they help to create. If you have any more facts you'd like to share with us, feel free to leave them in the comments below and perhaps we'll compile them into a sequel. Be sure to subscribe to not miss our future uploads, leave a like, and as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.